Today we will continue on with uh, medical school histology basics where we describe uh, different components of the cells, tissues, and, and organ systems with basic information about those. But today we'll talk about connective tissue, the different characteristics of connective tissue, the different cells in a connective tissue, and what characteristics these cells facilitate their function. Today we'll be talking about connective tissue and hosts of cells, as you can see here, that are on connective tissue. So what is the function of connective tissue? The function is it's a histologic glue. It binds things together in organs, connective tissue around. Whenever you cut your steak, there's, you go through connective tissue, it's more difficult to cut through. What you see is a histologic glue that holds that meat together. It's also a mechanical support. It's the stroma below the epithelium. It's the skeleton. Also has metabolic exchange. It's the vascular bed that's below that, that provides the nutrients for, for the tissue. Uh, it also stores energy in the fat cells that you see here. And it is the site of the action of the immune system for inflammation. Here we can see a lot of plasma cells right inside these epithelial cells next to them. Now there are distinguishing characteristics of connective tissue. Loose connective tissue has a lot of cells. This is epithelium here, but loose connective tissue, you can see the fibroblasts here. But it has sparse fibers, and we can see the pink fibers that are here, the collagen fibers. There's also dense connective tissue. And that has a lot of fibers and not many cells. You can see a high density of these fibers here. And there's cartilage is one, and we'll have a session on cartilage and bone. And we can see the cartilage here, the, the shiny part of a chicken bone, or the bone itself, calcified matrix that supports. So cartilage, bone, dense connective tissue, loose connective tissue, all those are connective tissue. And if we look, uh, skin has an epidermis and a dermis. The dermis is the connective tissue. And right underneath the epidermis, you have dense, irregular. That is, the fibers run in different directions. Connective tissue, you have few cells and lots of fibers. But if you go on down deeper to where you have fat, so the hypodermis, you can see loose connective tissue, lots of cells, and not many fibers that we can see. So if you look at a little piece of skin here, part of a finger of a monkey, you have regular connective tissue that could be dense or they could be loose. And here we see loose connective tissue here, fat cells and also a loose connective tissue. And you see dense, irregular connective tissue, which is which has a lot of fibers and few cells. If we look at it further, we can see those cells are fibroblasts. They receive fibroblasts all around and through their dents because it has a lots of fibers in between cells and it's irregular because it runs in different directions. So this is a dermis, the epidermis, and here we can see the fibroblasts that are in there, collagen in between there, bones of collagen, and we can see fat cells. Now don't confuse the fibroblasts that you see here. You see a round nerve here and here, and you see throughout uh, the tissue with nerve. This is nerve in through here. And also later on, we'll see smooth muscle. It's another a possible to thing to concern. But you see the dense irregular connective tissue right underneath it. The epidermis in the subdermal region is where you have loose connective tissue. Here we see some endothelial cells that are inside uh, lining the capillaries and the epithelial cells. But it's the connective tissue below the epithelium that provides the nutrients for the epithelium, which is a vascular, as we can see. Also, we look at organs. Here's a spleen, and you have dense, irregular connective tissue that surrounds us in the capsule itself. And you can see not only in the capsule, but you project in through there these trabeculae that project in is connective tissue too. Here in the spleen, we can see the capsule, very lots of fibers in through there, and the fibers run in different directions. And here we can see later on, we'll learn about reticular fibers, uh, which are branched fibers that form a mesh for the cells to percolate through. Also, we can see a capsule. This happened to be in the spleen that we can see. Mesothelium 
the epithelium that's on the surface we see below that is a capsule. So these are fibroblasts and this is dense irregular connective tissue mesothelium we see right through there, little epithelial cells on the surface. And we see macrophages in there that we will talk about later on. But you can see here, fibroblasts run through there, fibroblasts run through the septum to help support the spleen. Here's the kidney capsule, dense irregular connective tissue as you see. There's fibroblasts in through there, but there's also bundles of type 1 collagen or connective tissue cells. The fibers would be the type 1 collagen fibers. And here we can see another dense irregular connective tissue. This is a tunic albuginea. This is a connective tissue band that surrounds the erectile tissue in the penis that causes the erection to go straight out as opposed to blowing up like a bloom whenever this erectile tissue is full of blood. So we see skin in through there and these are little, this is smooth muscle cells in through there, but you can see other little nuclei in there which would be the fibroblasts. Also in, below the epithelium uh, in the intestine, these are intestinal villi, we can see epithelium is a lamina propria. The lamina propria is where you have loose connective tissue in the gut and we can see that. Here's a host of cells and not many fibers that we can see they're loose in the lamina propria below the epithelium. Also this is where blood vessels are located providing nutrients for the epithelial cell. Here we see fibroblasts, there's this nucleus, there's cytoplasm projecting on either side. So we have dense irregular, that is fibers run in different directions, and we can have dense regular connective tissue, and this is what we have in a tendon. Here we see a tendon with dense regular connective tissue. The nuclei of fibroblasts are kind of far apart with lots of fibers in between there, hence dense, and the fibers all run in one direction, which is regular. So dense irregular connective tissue, high density of fibers, but you can see fibroblasts located in through there too, and there's also fibroblasts right in this, supporting this blood vessel that's running through there. And there's a host of different cells in the connective tissue, and you have progenitor cells in the bone marrow that gives rise to a host of cells, including the cells of both cartilage and bone. So in there we have cells of the blood cells that we see, the megakaryocytes that produce platelets, the lymphocytes that produce plasma cells, monocytes that make macrophages, fat cells, even endothelial cells come from these connective tissue cells, and mesothelium also are the two types of epithelium that comes from these cells. So we can see the main cell is a fibroblast, there's this nucleus that kind of looks like a greyhound running with its projections of its cytoplasm. There's also a macrophage and a mast cell with lots of granules and we can kind of see those cells in through there. Some fat cells. So if we look at these, here's a mast cell. There's a nucleus and the deep blue granules. And then here is a macrophage. And one characteristic of macrophage is just happening, taking up colloidal carbon. And so therefore we can see that it is a macrophage. There's a nucleus right in through there. But what you characteristic of macrophage is difference in densities in the granules themselves. Fibroblasts, these are nuclei of fibroblasts. You can see a little bit of cytoplasm running through there. This electron micrograph of a fibroblast. There's one nucleus there. There's another cell there. You can see the cytoplasm of the cell. And there's a host of fibers that we'll look at later on. Another cell is a plasma cell. So the B lymphocytes gave rise to the plasma cell and this cell is going to produce antibodies and then we have fat cells look kind of like chicken wire that is what fat cells are you can see the white here where the fat was located in through there so as i mentioned in addition to the fibroblasts and macrophages you have the host of blood cells the blood cells that we can see and we can see those we see the erythrocyte the red blood cells the white blood cells neutrophils monocytes basophils a host of these uh, and you can see some of them have liability nucleus and some have red granules blue granules or, or very small granules and then others have a very fairly euchromatic nucleus and a large cytoplasm. Other have no nucleus at all. And these cells, of course, are derived from bone marrow. And here we can see uh, there's a little URL that talks about differentiation of the cells in the bone marrow to make red blood cells or to make uh, neutrophils. Here we see a piece of bone and we see a blood vessel there with uh, red blood cells and white blood cells going through. And we have hematopoic tissue that's located here. That's a source of these cells. They have to migrate from here into the bloodstream uh, to get in the bloodstream. So fibroblasts are everywhere. Uh, they support tissue. 
And here we can see the nucleus and a little bit of cytoplasm of these uh, fibroblasts. And in between there, these fibroblasts produce the collagen bundles, which is extracellular, that is outside the cell. And so we can see these bundles of connective tissue. Now note that the bundles of connective tissue looks different than the color of the cells of smooth muscle cells. These are smooth muscle cells. A characteristic of smooth muscle is that the nucleus kind of causes a little corkscrew. You can see they're not nice and long that some of them are kind of indented as you can see as a contraction has occurred. So smooth muscle of this little muscular artery goes from here to here. Another connective tissue component is the internal elastic lamina. A lamina is the elastin is one of the connective tissue fibers. Endothelial cells lining these blood vessels, the venules or the muscular artery. But you can see the difference between fibroblasts, nuclei, and smooth muscle. The pink here is actually the cytoplasm of the cell. The pink here that we see, the kind of orange looking, that is really the bundles of connective tissue fibers, the collagen fibers. Here we see the fat cells, are kind of like chicken wires you can see in the spermatic cord. And this would be, of course, loose connective tissue. Here we see a host of fibroblasts all in through here. Fibroblasts and bundles of collagen fi fibers as well. Fibroblasts over through here. But these are smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle cells here, here, and don't confuse that with nerve. Now there's fibroblasts around nerve in the perineurium, for example, but these are actually swan cell nuclei that we're seeing there. A large vein, a smooth muscle, bundles of muscle, but it's connective tissue in between. So these cells in here would be fibroblasts and this would be smooth muscle. Here we can see fibroblasts in this kind of clear area. One thing about connective tissue largely is non-pigmented. If you ever seen a cut on a horse or something and see the tendon, you see it's white because it's non-pigmented and less specific of for pigment. And we can see that these are valves in through here of the veins, and the valves have connective tissue, collagen fibers and fibroblasts that run right between there, even though they are lined by the endothelial cells. Arteriole, you can see the smooth muscle cells in through there, but right outside there are the fibroblasts, which comport, support these. In blood vessels, you have different components of the wall. You have endothelium, you have, so that's the intima, and the media is the muscle, and the advent tissue is the connective tissue around, and that's composed of fibroblasts. We see all these fibroblasts in through there, but there's smooth muscle that are, that's in the wall of the blood vessels themselves. Fat cells, again, they look like kind of like chicken wire. This is nerve in through there, but then these guys in through here will be all be fibroblast nuclei with a bundles of collagen in between. We look at electron micrograph, we can see several fibroblasts in through there, and we can see the cytoplasm of the fibroblast in through there and there, but outside this fibroblast extravascular, extracellular, you can see a collagen fiber. So these are individual fibers. Characteristic of collagen fibers is a very in thick uh, that you can see but there can be bundles of them and here you can see the bundles of connective tissue and the fibroblasts that have made them you can also see some plasma cells in through here but here we can see the chicken wire nature of the fat cells and this is loose connective tissue now fat cells could have a single droplet or they could have multiple small droplets if they have multiple small drops, we call it brown fat. And white fat would be the one that's a single big droplet. This is actually white cells from a fetal jaw right in through there. And in there, the cell is not developed fully in such that we can actually see the cytoplasm that, that's making this droplet inside there. You can see it better that these are indeed cells all the way around the fat droplet in fetal tissue than you can in the adult. Another cell is a mast cell. You can see the, the nucleus and the cytoplasm of these uh, blue granules that are located in through there. Usually mast cells, kind of like blood vessels, are going to be found near blood vessels. Other cells of the immune system would be at work in the connective tissue. This is a chronic infection of the stomach. And we can see the epithelial cells on the stomach, the parietal cells. But also in between there, we can see the mast cells with the different granules. We can see plasma cells that produce antibodies. And here we can see mast cells again with the high density of these really dark granules. There's the nucleus in there. Mast cells cannot be a, is not a terminal cell. It will degranulate. So therefore, it will make the granules and then degranulate and then it makes more granules. So 
so it needs a big nucleus. It doesn't have a libellated nucleus like a neutrophil, uh, which is a terminal cell. Mast cell is not a terminal cell. Here we see the mast cell. There's a nucleus, and then these are the granules, mitochondria through there, and there's reference plasma reticulum in there, which is responsible for making these granules. Here in the lungs, we see air spaces, and we can see where the, the lungs have picked up carbon, probably as a smoker, that we can see. These are macrophages. There's a nucleus, and you can see debris that's picking up from there. Don't confuse the macrophages, which are the dust cells that are in the air spaces themselves, with the type 2 pneumocyte, which is kind of in the corner there, and that produces a surfactant. A type 1 cell would be right in through there for it to have the gases exchanged to occur. So you do have these macrophages in lungs. In fact, you have macrophage-like cells all over the body. We saw them in the spleen. Here we can see them in the lamina propria. So this is one cell here. There's a secre there's a granules of digestion, and there is the nucleus. We can see the cell here and here again. Those are macrophages. If we look at the higher magnification of the macrophage, we can see that a characteristic of macrophages is they have different densities of the vacuoles that are there or the granules that are there and even within a, a given one you can vary in darkness and that relates to the amount of degradation that has occurred in whatever has been phagocytized by that cell. As I mentioned these cells are everywhere one place or other in the liver and we call those Kupfer cells. And you can see here where they took, took up carbon, and so you can see them. Here's an electron micrograph of a Kupfer cell, which could be an endothelial cell located in through here at the same site. And then also you can see where the carbon had been picking up by macrophages in the spleen. So macrophage type cells are everywhere. Here in the, in the liver, you see the hepatocytes, you see the sinuses, and the Kupfer cells are right in the area right adjacent to the blood coming through. So it can help clean the clean the blood. The other cells are plasma cell. Here we see a plasma cell that produces antibodies. We can see the nice plasma cells in through their loose connective tissue cell. Here again is the chronic region of the stomach. And here we see neutrophils that are migrated in through there. This is eosinophils that are in there. This is a blood vessel. And this is what we we'll call margination, where the blood cells bind to the plasma wall and move into the infection site. Plasma cells that we see there, fibroblasts, and the cells that we can see there. This is a uh, dermis, ep epidermis, and these are fibroblasts. So fibroblasts can be in the irregular arranged dense fibers or they can be in the regular arranged dense fibers that you see. And since the collagen fibers has high flexibility, high tensile strength, and resist stretch, the concentration of these fibers is important when you contribute to certain critical points. In a tendon, you want them all running in one direction because you're uh, attaching the bone to, uh, to the muscle or ligament bone to bone. You need to have a lot of these fibers to resist stress. Here we can see on a special stain that shows you the collagen bundles. Here it is in the lamina propria. This is loose, lots of cells and not many fibers, as opposed to the capsule around cartilage that we can see. You can see where this is right here. This is cartilage and right out there is a perichondrium. And this perichondrium has a high density of fibers into their so this would be dense irregular connective tissue as opposed to loose connective tissue over through there. Here at electron microscopic level, this is a, a swan cell and this is a nerve. This is a fibroblast here, which is part of the perineurium. And outside there, we see collagen fibers. And collagen fibers has periodicity of search associated with it. Also characteristic, it varies in thickness. These are cross sections of the collagen fibers. So we can see it again, collagen fibers in through there, fibroblasts in through there and more collagen fibers. Another type of fiber that's in connective tissue is the reticular fibers. And the reticular fibers are branched. They form a mesh. And here you can see them in the spleen. So these would be blood uh, sinuses in through there. And this would be strands, the so-called Billroth strands or the splenic strands. And so as the cells will percolate down in through, the reticular fibers support them. It's like a grapevine. If you threw some ping pong balls or uh, golf balls in a grapevine, it would kind of uh, pinball back and forth and eventually fall through. And that's kind of what happens in these cells is that the reticular fibers branch and they hold the, the blood cells that are going through there, the lymphocytes or whatever 
is coming through and it holds them so they don't all pile on the bottom. As I mentioned, there are different fibers. We've got elastic fibers, collagen fibers, and reticular fibers, different fibers. And if we look at the aorta, we can see that sometimes there are fibers and sometimes there's lamina, like a layer. And here we can see this swirly thing here is elastic lamina that you see and so here we see smooth muscle cells but also the elastic fibers and the elastic lamina here's the internal elastic lamina in the muscular artery so these are smooth muscle cells but out here is so this would be the intimate media and the advent tissue the advent tissue is connective tissue with elastic fibers and collagen fibers out through there so if you look at a little arteriole this is the endothelial cells and this is the interelastic lamina. And that interelastic membrane is actually an elastic lamina or layer. Now, a smaller vessel would actually have elastic fibers. And you can see these through here, which breaks down from elastic lamina to just fibers. It's endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells. And here we can see a, a, a typical of elastic fibers is amorphous. You can't really see. It's just a smudge there. You can't see any shape of it. So in summary, the function of connective tissue is a histologic glue. It's what holds things together. It provides mechanical support. It's the skeleton and the bone marrow and all the cells that it's produced. Metabolic exchange is the vascular bed below the epithelium. Energy storage with the fat cells and inflammatory response with all the immune cells there. And a lot of those are uh, blood cells. And here we see a bunch of blood cells in through there. And we, uh, of course, these cells came from the bone marrow. And you can see uh, in the bone a host of different cells that give rise to uh, the red blood cells. And we see the other cells that we mentioned, the fat cells, mast cells, and a host of it. Questions on connective tissue. Connective tissue provides mechanical support and metabolic exchange for epithelia. True. Provides a site for the battle for blood-borne immune cells. Yes. Storage energy in striated muscle cells? No, it stores energy, but it does it in fat cells. So the answer is A and B. Classification of connective tissue proper is based on the ratio of cells to extracellular matrix? True. Arrangement of fibers, regular or irregular? True. The density of fibers in extracellular matrix? True. The answer is E, A, B, and C. All three of these are used to classify connective tissue. Cells of connective tissue that are progenitor or stem cells are adipose cells? No. Macrophage? No. Plasma cells? No. Mast cells? No. All those are in cells. The only one that can make are the fibroblasts, especially the mesenchymal cells of the fibroblast-like structures. We want to thank the original sources for any of those illustrations that I've used. I made none of these. All these are from uh, some of these uh, books here, and we thank the original source for them. Uh, here we see the Rio Grande. There's Mexico over here, and this is Big Ben. Very nice to see. So this is the end of Medical School Histology Basics connective tissue. This information was useful to you. Uh, please share it with your colleagues and your friends. Please consider subscribing to the VIBS Histology YouTube. Thank you.